Hey, how you doing guys? Roman Chester here with Hammer and Anvil. And today guys, I'm going to show you guys how to make a dragon tail bottle opener. Um, now, first things first guys, safety, eyewear, hearing protection if you got it, if you want it. Make sure you're wearing proper footwear, not flip flops or something like that. And uh, gloves if you decide to wear them or not. I don't wear gloves, especially on my hammer hand because I don't want to mess up my hammer grip. Um, I am wearing shorts because it's like hot as heck outside and I figure um, a small even burns better than a two stroke. Make sure you're hydrated as well. And you're not hanging around anywhere or anything flammable. Now with that guys, today we're gonna be using um, 3 8 bars a uh, square bar stock. Um, that's a little wow. this thick. Um, make sure uh, no, normally for this, I don't usually use something that thick, but that's what I'm going to use today. Um, so, tools you're going to need, hammer, anvil, a forge as you hear in the background. You're going to need a pair of pliers and channel locks, and that's about all you're going to need. Really gonna, you're not even really going to need tongs too much. A uh, very pair of channel locks work fine, or a torch, because we are going to have to bend a few things. With that, I'm going to go ahead and get this thing straightened out because I'm using, you know, the other piece I have, I didn't cut it flat, so I'm going to kind of get it flat real quick and then we'll get started showing you how to make this uh, fancy little bottle opener. Alright, so the very first thing we're going to do is we got to go ahead and make a taper. We're going to make a small little point at the end there. So we're going to start with the far side of the anvil and we're going to hold the hammer at around a you know, 45 degree angle and we're going to strike down and out. Okay, just like that, kind of following the angle of the hammer. So we're going to make a taper like that. We're going to do, we're going to hit it on two sides, flip, hit on two, uh, hit it twice I mean, flip, hit it twice, flip, hit it twice, keep doing that until we get a nice little taper going. So that's the first thing we're going to do. So. Alright, so, again, 25, 1, 2, 1, 2, 1, 2. Unfortunately, I'm going to have to clean up that tip there just because it wasn't necessarily even. Okay, just we're going to have to point this to here more. Don't need too much more because it's, uh, it's pretty good. We don't need too extreme of a point. All right, next thing we're going to do is we're just going to go across small little cube size. We're going to go half on, half off close and do a set down. Unfortunately, cool down too fast now. All right, so the next step is simple. We're going to take the bar uh, at the end of the taper, move it to the edge of it, the far edge of the anvil, and you're going to hold it actually the bar at a 45 degree angle. So we're going to want it like that. And we're going to do half one, half off loads right into the edge of the anvil here. Um, and we're going to go ahead and create the uh, what is it, the, the, the little things on the tail there. And we're going to do about five or six of those total. Right. So about here will work. One. All right. Just like that. And we're going to go down again. About a half inch, same thing. Nice and deep. Just like that. Actually, I'll probably give them each one more smack. All right, two more smacks. Just like that. Get out a little 
back in the fire. We're gonna do eh, probably about two more. Now normally, I don't use stock this big. I say it's really big stock. I usually use something, uh, I, I don't remember the size I was using. That's 3 8 so I think I was using like, I don't know, quarter inch stock or something ridiculously small because it doesn't need to be that big. So, but you know, I want to show you guys how to do this. Make sure you play the envelope. something I'm doing which you might not see is just, when I strike I pull I pull back on this so I can feel it catch so that way I know where to hit so we're gonna do one more kind of get started with that real quick put back in the fire that'll be the last part of the body tail thing right now. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna stick it in the forge, right? So we got a spatula thing at the end there. We got the point and we're gonna start bending these around like a uh, scorpion tail. Alright, for this part we're gonna need our channel lock some pliers or needle nose pliers if it's thin enough. Here is already 
too cold, so we're gonna have to heat that back up. Is here still warm enough? No, nope. all right, put that back in the forge. water cooled off real quick turn my forge off all right so we are done so I went ahead and just put it on a wire wheel uh, cleaned up a lot of the scale off of it um, may look nice kind of deal so there you go there's your scorpion bottle scorpion tail bottle opener um, the way it works is probably pretty simple you may need to make some slight adjustments to it I'm not gonna lie to you guys I don't have a bottle here to figure it out um, but what this will do is, is this part here will go underneath the cap and this goes above the actual cap lid actually I can tell you right now this part here needs to go out more but it would go on top of the cap and just pop it up so that's it so I would have to adjust this more this this part here would need to come out a little bit and and down but overall that's how you make a scrubber tail bottle opener like I said, normally I don't use this thick of a stock. I usually use a lot thinner. Um, but they work. I have a, I don't know, a dozen of them in my house right now that we use. So, next time, guys, maybe, try to make one of these style bottle openers. Um, well, we'll see. Maybe something else. But that, guys, hopefully you found this entertaining at the very least and hopefully, hopefully helpful for you guys. Um, now, one of the reasons why I, I, I made this one first is because you saw how easy it is. You didn't really need that many tools. Um, didn't require a whole lot. It gives you to start with having to start making the taper, um, you know, flatten things out, hot cuts, and some bending. So, uh, a couple little pointers. Um, if your taper starts to, um, instead of bulging like we want it to, uh, it starts to kind of fold up on the edges there, you get what's called fish lips. That, that generally means your metal is not hot enough. You need to get it hotter. So that way when you are hammering at that angle, it will push it out to a point instead of causing the top layer to roll over. So that's usually gonna be the first thing there. Uh, if you notice while you're hammering these and it starts to, this, you know, starts to bend a curve, you saw you just straighten it out. A lot of times that'll just happen because your arms maybe not parallel with the work surface or something like that. It's no big deal. With that guys, thank you for watching. I'll see you guys later.